Big, big fans. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things only Supernatural fans understand. No rule, you steal my baby, you get punched. Shut up. Gidget. For this list, we'll be going over the concepts, running gags, memes, and other aspects of the TV show Supernatural that are either only understandable by the show's fans, or else have a different meaning for them. If there's something that's SPN family only, or something else that went over our heads, please share it in the comments. Number 10. Odd One Out The Winchesters are all about family, whether they're related by blood or not. No matter what, they're always pulling each other out of scrapes, regardless of if it's against a run-of-the-mill monster or the apocalypse, one of them anyway. However, there seems to be one notable exception, Sam and Dean's half-brother Adam. Come on, move it! The heroic duo just leave him to rot in hell for a decade. And it's not as if they were never in the neighborhood. They're even best frenemies with the king of the place for crying out loud. Who's that? Oh, that's Adam, John Winchester's other kid. He's still trapped in a cage in hell with Lucifer. While Adam returns in season 15 and the boys finally apologize to their bro during this arc, there's no denying that this has been a long time coming. No, we bailed on you, okay? And there's nothing that we can say to fix that. How about, uh, I'm sorry. Number nine, season identification. I'm telling you, give me five minutes with some clippers and- uh, Shut up. Given how long it's been on, Supernatural has attracted a wide variety of fans with many different viewpoints, particularly when it comes to what constitutes a real fan. But one of the easiest ways to spot the truly dedicated is finding those people who can identify which season any given clip comes from by the length of Sam's hair and or his sideburns. Why give the bad guys the advantage of long, pullable hair, right? <laughs> wow. I've been trying to tell Sam that for years. It's actually a running gag that it just gets longer and longer while he gets sadder and sadder as time goes on, among members of the SPN family. It's gone so far that there have been jokes that he'd eventually resemble a mopey Chewbacca in the future. To be fair though, Sam actually varies things up enough to the point that the truly observant can pick out which season is which. I'm especially fond of Sam's impressive, extensive array of hair products. Number eight, the family business. For most people, a family business usually means a trade passed down through generations or else involves a physical business that has been kept in the family. But the way I see it, Dad's given us a job to do, and I intend to do it. The Winchester's particular enterprise is anything but ordinary, and usually involves two things. Say it with us now. Oh, and then there are all the jobs they pretend to have in aid of their actual work. But generally, it's the saving people and hunting things that's being referred to. Aren't you the guys from the health department? Yeah, and florists on the side, plus FBI. And on Thursdays, we're teddy bear doctors. Huh? And Supernatural fans have a hard time not mentioning the Winchester's family business whenever a real world one is brought up. It'd certainly make mom and pop shops more interesting. Number seven, Moose. Miles out of your leg, Moose. Driving along a wooded road in the northern parts of North America, you may come across a road sign with a moose on it. One supernatural meme features just that, with the moose destroying a car and a sad Dean lamenting that Sam has destroyed his beloved Impala. More on that later. To anyone who isn't a fan of the show, this is utter gibberish, but those in the know will recall Crowley's nickname for Sam is Moose. This is a reference to Rocky and Bullwinkle, as he refers to the Winchesters collectively as Moose and Squirrel. Ah. Nice try, Squirrel. Moose is doing these trials. Moose signs. What we're wondering is if Crowley is Boris, then who are Natasha and Fearless Leader? You know I get why Crowley calls you Moose now. Number six, Bobby's life advice. Bobby Singer is the gruff, dependable father figure that the Winchesters and a lot of fans needed and deserved. Shut up. Idiot. Whether he's calling them idiots with an affectionate twinkle in his eye, or just helping them out by researching a monster they're up against, Bobby is just the best. 
but he can also be tough on the boys when they need to hear it. And his words of wisdom can be helpful to anyone that hears them. Now you find your reasons to get back in the game. I don't care if it's love or spite or a $10 bet. I've been to enough funerals. I mean it. You die before me and I'll kill you. Sometimes putting your feelings into perspective is necessary when they get in the way of what you need to accomplish. Or as Bobby would put it, Well, boo hoo, I am so sorry your feelings are hurt, princess. Number five, ass butt. There are a wide variety of creative and hilarious insults delivered throughout Supernatural's long history, but one of its most memorable is also one of its least creative, ass butt. You remember me? You called me ass butt and set me on fire. It's primarily associated with Castiel, thanks to his confrontation with Michael and Lucifer during the apocalypse. The angel yelled the nonsense insult at the former before throwing a holy fire Molotov cocktail at him. Hey, ass butt. No doubt he was trying to use a tough guy one-liner after being exposed to Dean. However, his adorable but failed attempt has become such an enduring and beloved insult, both within the show and the fandom, that we're sure it completely baffles non-fans. Yes, but I, 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 I still don't get that. Number four, pentagrams. In the real world, pentagrams or pentacles are often associated with devil worship or dark magic. So it's no surprise when Supernatural fans get some odd looks when they sport them on clothes, necklaces, or tattoos. Smart. How long you had those? Not long enough. In the world of Supernatural, the pentagram is actually used to ward against evil, which is its true purpose, when it's not inverted anyway. It's often used by the series' characters, particularly Sam and Dean, as a means of avoiding demonic possession. Really? Because it looks like devil worship. What? No, no, this is not devil worship. This, this is, this, this is the... Uh, I don't have a good answer. The symbol also makes up the core of the boys' anti-possession tattoos. Of course, their in-universe fans also sport these symbols, which is just all kinds of meta. Like I said, we are, um, <laughs> big, big fans. They're not the only ones, though. In addition to expressing a fondness for Lucifer, demons, and viewing God as a deadbeat dad, some real-life Supernatural fans have their very own tattoos modeled after the Winchesters. Number three, baby. No rule, you steal my baby, you get punched. While plenty of people have love affairs with their cars in real life, Dean's a bit more literal than most. He calls his 1967 Chevy Impala baby after all. The amount of sentimental attachment Dean has with his vehicle is important not only to him, but also to the show in general. There's even an episode told from the car's point of view. Uh, so Dean, I, I don't believe what you're hunting is a whisper. <laughs> Must be another creature of some kind. So if a Supernatural fan ever spots an Impala on the street, you can bet they'll call it Baby 2, or at least they'll stop to enjoy the view. Oh yeah, Dean plus Baby? Better love story than Twilight. If somebody stole the Impala, what would you do? Murder. I'd murder them all. Number two, main character deaths. TV shows these days kill off their characters with a lot more regularity than they used to, but Supernatural has probably set some records both in frequency and in volume. If you tally up all of their deaths combined, Sam and Dean have died over hundreds of times throughout the seasons. I mean, you and me, we're like the poster boys of the unnatural order. All we do is ditch death. Yeah, but the normal rules don't really apply to us, do they? Thanks to a time loop, Dean even died multiple times in a single episode, making Sam's death count much smaller than his older bros. <laughs> Life and death are kind of the show's bread and butter, though, and it's a testament to the writers and actors that fans still cry with regularity whenever their favorite character gets killed off, again and again. So while other series have sad character deaths, Supernatural puts its audience hearts through the ringer on the regular. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Fan art, it gets pretty weird. How do you feel about this, Jared? Listen, I never wear jeans without a belt. Still not being over what happened to Kevin Tran. We don't want to talk about Kevin. Kevin. 
The Castiel look. It's so hot right now. I don't know, but she is. Oh, well, that's great, because without your power, you're basically just a baby in a trench coat. Pie. Regular dessert or better than heaven? We're with Dean on this one. Heaven, right? Trust me, pal. Better. Hunting. Lots of people hunt, but what the prey is determines if you're a Supernatural fan. Dad's on a hunting trip, and he hasn't been home in a few days. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Carry On Wayward Son Carry On Wayward Son is a song by Kansas, a 70s rock band. It's also pretty much the unofficial theme song of Supernatural. Dad's given us a job to do. He wants us to pick up where he left off, saving people, hunting things. That's because the tune has played over the segment that recaps the past year of every season, except for the first. But that's not all. Listening to the progressive rock number can elicit a lot of conflicting emotions in fans. She will shoot you. This includes 1. Nostalgia at all the events that led up to the show playing it again. 2. Dread, because despite the song's lyrics, the events of the finales frequently make us want to cry. And 3. Excitement, since what follows is usually pretty epic. Don't you cry no more. Sam! Also, it's just an awesome song. We're not so sure how much of that last emotion we'll be feeling while watching the season 15 series finale, but in a fitting send-off, that same last episode is set to be titled Carry On. We're not crying, you're crying. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.